welcome to Tea or Coffee, the program designed for you to educate, inform you, and also entertain you. My name is Ronke Ashiru, and... My name is Mudupe Jacobs. All right, both of us today will be taking you through Today, Wednesday, the Wellness Wednesday, like we say here, Wednesday is a wellness because wellness does not mean that it's just physical. We talk about the mental state, the physical, and even the spiritual state. And that is what we're taking you through today. Today, what are we focusing on? We're focusing on drug abuse, the effects of drug abuse. The effect of drug abuse, because a lot of people need to know that. Yes. It's getting rampant in this part of the very, very, society. especially young, the especially young, young people these days. We see them, you know, abusing different types of drugs. So I think we actually need to address it. So cool. it's important that we do. All right, we have a specialist in the house today. So we'll go on a break to give you the opportunity to go get your tea or coffee, and then when we come back, we'll talk more on effect of, of drug, drug abuse. abuse. a thrilling and bonding experience at High Impact Planet Amusement Park and Resort. Enjoy an amazing retreat in our extremely secured environment with our breathtaking rides. Set goals for the upcoming year in our convenient multi-purpose halls. Bond between team members while giving your staff a desirable treat. High Impact Planet. Fun just got real. Welcome back. This is still tea or coffee on High Impact TV. Of course, um, I still have my co-presenter here. Yes, that's yes. Me. And okay, we were saying earlier that today we're going to be discussing effects of drug abuse. And of course, we have an expert already here in the studio to help you know talk about it and shed more light on it. And his name is Mr. Casey Ogundele. Uh, Mr. Casey Ogundele is an occupational therapist who graduated from the Department of Medical Rehabilitation College of Health Sciences, Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Oshun State. Currently, he is working at Concept One Medical Center, Lagos State. You're welcome, Mr. You're Casey. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Uh, the pleasure is mine. Yes. You. All right. So um, today topic for today is the effects of drug abuse. So let's just start from the basics. Exactly. What is drug, drug abuse? abuse? Well, basically, drug abuse to a layman is, you know, you take any form of substance, which is a drug. Now, this drug is actually split into two aspects. But first, let me just describe what drug is in a nutshell. Drug is any substance that is used to cause any physiological change in the body system of human beings. Okay. So we have different types of drugs, mm -hmm. but for the sake of abuse, let me use the word legal drugs and illegal, illegal drugs. drugs. Okay. Now, for legal drugs, these are pharmaceutical drugs in which they actually are actually prescribed by doctors or pharmacists for, for you to use for a particular ailment. ailment. But there are also some in which they are actually prescribed for other ailments, but it is actually illegal for some occasions or for some uh, conditions. So, but as the case may be, there are also, also, also other drugs who actually fall under illegal drugs, which are cocaine, heroin, you know, and the likes. Okay. So, uh, drug abuse is now the abuse. That is the 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 the, the overuse. The, no, 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 no. You know, we have drug abuse, we have yes. drug misuse, we have drug misuse. overuse. Okay, but yes. drug abuse is when you take a particular substance or mm -hmm. particular drug, which is meant for a particular condition, yes. but mm -hmm. you don't do that for that condition, mm -hmm. and you go ahead to probably use it for some other, you know, uh, satisfaction, uh, that is drug abuse. Yes. And particularly, it doesn't necessarily have to deal with the illegal drugs alone. Yes. Sometimes the illegal, dro the illegal drugs can be abused okay. as well. So, that is drug abuse. All right. So, um, okay. Do you want what, to are the, what, are, what are the effects? Okay. You know, because we are talking, for me, 
talking with you now, I'm thinking of maybe the normal paracetamol that we're talking about. Yeah, it can be abused. Too much of it. It's it drug abuse. Abused. Yes, mm -hmm. it is. So those kind of drugs, okay, let's start from the legal drugs. All right. What are the effects of the misuse? Okay, um, for the legal drugs, okay, let, let, let me cite an instance. Now, particularly the, the drivers, when you go on long distance travel or long distance journey, you see them using uh, alabucon, you just stay a lot. You can see alabucon or paracetamol is actually meant to, a, to you know, treat pain. Aches and pain. Do you get, yes. but them using it to just stay a lot, not having any form of pain, pain. that's an abuse. Okay. Do you get? Okay. So for such a person who actually has to, who actually is supposed to have slept, uh, you know, around at, at a point in time mm -hmm. during that day, but had to use that drug to stay alert. Okay. Definitely, there will be a case of uh, sleeplessness at All a point, right. probably during the night. There will be a case of uh, uh, insomnia. Uh, insomnia. Insomnia, yeah, that's sleeplessness. And then there, there, there might be a case of uh, um, distortion. That is hallucination. Oh, okay. right. You know, for for the sake uh, for the for the case of the driver, probably the events that has played all through the day will probably be having effect on him. Probably when he's supposed to sleep at night, he'll probably be shouting, hey, 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 while he's while he's sleeping, mm -hmm. daydreams and all that. You know. So talking. That is during, for legal. Um, in dreams, or while sleeping. While is sleeping, it, is it, you know. A bad case is is it wrong? Well. For some cases, yeah. it is. Okay, it is but not, actually, all, not, all, not, not all cases. Not all, okay. No, not all cases. Okay. So by the time, okay, the person starts talking in the dream, yeah, press the brake. Press the brake. <laughs> Come on, back where, and all that. All you right. know, probably the partner would just be wondering, like, what is happening here? But what my is... hallucination is when you're awake and then... No, 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 no. that's not hallucination. Okay. Hallucination is actually a distortion of distortion. Uh, state of mind and stuff you, you get. While you sleep, you're supposed to be resting. Yes. Your, your body, soul, okay. and spirit. But imagine you talking and addressing situations, conditions in which, on a physical, there's, there is okay. really no present. So let's talk about what is... Rampant now, what um, people have actually been talking about, about the misuse of um, these drugs for in teenagers, oh. with teenagers, you know, uh, well, um, university students and all that. Well, it's, it has become sort of a, a trend a now. A concern. It's, it's more like a, a social, you know, you know interactive uh, phenomenon in which when you find young people gathered together, if they don't have anything tangible to do, hmm. they, they eventually have to result into some form of uh, drug abuse. In the case of tramadol, codeine, and all that. Now, this has actually been in existence even before now. It's just that it has become more prominent. Mm -hmm. You find it in secondary schools with children. Secondary it, schools? Yes. Secondary? Secondary. You right. find it with... Uh, University students, uh, virtually every party you attend back in the university or in current university, whether private or public, you find you know these drugs being passed around, you know, and for you know, what? 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 Um, does well, it give a sense of satisfaction? Uh, one, not only satisfaction mm -hmm. to them. It's actually a sense of belonging at first because hmm. you see how your friends doing it. You see, More like you know, peer virtually, pressure. yeah, peer pressure. You know, uh, let me have a taste of what is happening there. Let me let me just try how what my friend is doing over there. So, from that, from there, that is how you know this drug become introduced to persons and you know kids and children. And before you know it, we have cases of your dependence on this drug. Oh, yes. You can't do without it. You have to factor out how to get it and before you know it there's a case of uh, uh, tolerance now the the normal you know probably bottle or dose that you used to take is not satisfactory anymore you hmm. need to take more and more and more uh, it, it eventually happens in the case of all other you know legal drugs to cocaine cannabis and the likes so okay. it has become so trending in Yes, you said that the first thing is that um, they just want to feel them more. Mm -hmm. Yes. But after that, 
what is that? Is okay, like when they come to you, is that this? Um, do they? Um, is that this satisfaction? You know, some people like the adults. They will say, okay, they have a lot of problems, and so they want to just get it off their system, or they they don't want to think about the problems. But these children, <laughs> I don't know the problem they have. They anyway. have so. What are the things that they feel when they take those drugs? Now, let me, let me take it from the last point you made, yes. mentioned. Kids also have problems. All right. You know, sometimes you just try to shield it off. Okay. Some kids actually come from poor background. Some okay. come from bad marriages, okay. you know, absent fathers, absent mothers, and mm. all that. Okay. And whenever they find a gathering of their peers, okay. they want to actually kill that feeling or probably drown that, you know, that issues sadness. and all. So they tend to actually, you know, okay. gravitate towards, you know, whatever their peers are doing and they intend to use anything they are, you know, but using no, and all. Um, that, okay, okay should so I? Are you going to ask that? At what point can you tell that someone is addicted to a drug? Uh, well, there's something they call withdrawal sy symptoms. Now, for somebody addicted or an addict to a drug, there are some withdrawal symptoms that such a person or such individuals exhibit. You get one is nausea, vomiting, aggression. Somebody who is naturally not aggressive, even on the little thing, or probably, you know, on little occasions, suddenly just flares up. And you, you try to trace the events that happen to the anger being shown, mm -hmm. it does not cor or correlate. Correct. Do you get, and on the normal, the person is naturally not as aggressive as that. You know, bad tempered, poor attitude, you know, poor outlook. You know, there was a study about c cigarette, about smokers. Mm -hmm. They actually age early. You will see a 30 year old looking like a 60 year old, mm -hmm. or like a 55 year old man. That was a study, you okay. know. And so uh, you, 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 find, you find them agitated. Okay. You find them craving. Some go to extent of selling their belongings to ensure that they lay their hands on these substances and so that they can... Sell their parents' things. Sell their parents' things. A whole lot of things. They, 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 they can give them school fees and school eventually they, they, use they use it to get drugs wow. and they tell their parents they're in school. A whole lot of things happening. Do you get whole lot of things. So they exhibit this and many more withdrawal symptoms in which naturally you won't find them doing on normal. But if you get close to these people, you will see them exhibiting it virtually every day. So the effects now that we're talking about, it's right. um, aggression. Aggression. Aggress uh, they're, they're, they're aggressive. Um, they spend their money or yeah. they sell their properties. Mm -hmm. What other things can um, happen? The, um, okay, let me take it from the women aspect. You know, it, it has been advised that pregnant women shouldn't take alcohol, shouldn't indulge in all these yes. things. Of course, because of the baby and all that, mm -hmm. that is one, so that they don't have you know, a whole lot of congenital you know, issues okay. with their baby. That is one. Then two, another thing is, it causes unemployment. There are a whole lot of people that have been laid off work what? because of drug issues, drug-related issues and all. And, um, and it actually have a, has a poor or bad uh, uh, impression on the economy. You know, when people are being laid off from work, yes. <laughs> unemployment rate increases. Mm -hmm. and aside so. from that, they, <laughs> they will still need to feed that... Um, the the cravings. The so that is where the, 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 the so avenue to sell to their yes. you know, stuff, sell and their they properties. They have nothing to sell again. Uh, well, they become nuisances on the street. Yes. And then um, poor attitude also. You know, take for example, most times I like to cite conductors because I see them virtually every day smoking and all that. I am yet to meet, I don't know, I'm sure they will be out there. I'm yet to meet a nice conductor in Lagos. I'm yet to meet, <laughs> I'm yet to meet such a person. <laughs> I know they, they, we, they we will, have, but, it's but just like I am yet rare. to meet. <laughs> one, <laughs> <You> one <know>. person. <laughs> Probably. Yeah. You know, poor attitude. You know, they just talk to people and, ah, and all that, you know. And um, there's a... Uh, relationship aspect, the relationship aspect also 
you hardly find people who want to relate with somebody who uses drugs or, or, or smokes heavily and or that you hardly find that they, they either roll with their kind or with their type or they stay alone in the park. Okay. So that is for, you know, and a whole lot of effects. Some people, they actually say that um, when they want to read or when they have a proposal to make um, um, for that the best thing is they take this and then they are very alert. Mm -hmm. uh, is well, that right? <laughs> and it, it well, that, that, is, that, is, that, is, that is actually what they say. They said they want to feel high. That's yeah. Yeah, high they yes. want to feel high. And you, you know what? Uh, <laughs> psychologically, they say feelings don't last. True. Do you yeah. get? So they ensure that they want to use these substances to ensure that their feelings, that high feeling actually lasts. A while. And you know, after that feeling of highness comes down, you come down and they, they back still to want to get one. more to actually go back. To yes. that. So there, 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 there's this uh, clip I use for my, my client. How you start drug is somebody introduces to it. You mm -hmm. see it, you see it around, you, 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 it's being passed across. Mm -hmm. They're like, okay, let me just try it. After a while, I think I like it. After a while, I like it. <laughs> After a while, I like, in capital letters, it. <laughs> Before, after, after a while, I need it. Okay. After a while, I need it in capital letters. Yes. Before you know it, the person is can't crashed. Can't do without it. Can't do without it. The person is crashed and out. So, inadvertently, that feeling of highness is actually present in the brain. There's a part of the brain called brainstem in which we have the neurotransmitters. Mm -hmm. Now, these neurotransmitters are responsible for our feelings, mood, our happy state, and mm -hmm. all. You see, those who actually said, okay, I need to use this so that I can have the energy or probably feel inspired to do all this, those uh, neurotransmitters responsible for that thing is actually yeah. there in the brain. They get, but they just need, they feel the need to stimulate it with all these exactly. stimulants and opioids to get that feeling, which, which is actually, actually wrong. Mm -hmm. Because naturally, that brings them actually controls your sleep nature and all. Because when you eventually use drugs, you find that your sleeping pattern is distorted. You, 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 find you have issues with sleep insomnia setting. Mm -hmm. You want to, you know, your, your mood, you, you, you be, you, you'll be swinging in between aggression or being restless and restlessness and being stable and all you know because you have actually affected something that actually works naturally normally by itself without a stimulant so it's actually very wrong for you to actually think that using you know substance can make you perform wow. can make you outperform <laughs> Or you feel it's a substance that can actually bring the best out, best of, you, out of you, in which you don't know that you're actually killing yourself gradually. And you know, most times um, we see videos of people, captions like, um, you just took so, an illegal drug and then, <laughs> let me use my He's hand. Inspired. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so what, is the, um, what does it contain that makes that, makes that affect the brain? It, it's a wrong message, actually, for you to think, okay, after using, you know, a substance, ah, you feel inspired mm -hmm. and all. Yes, I can know. dance for uh -huh. 10 hours. Mm -hmm. for now I can sing for 20 hours now uh -huh. without being tired. Yeah, you know, take for example cannabis. Okay. It contains cannabinoids. Like I said, when these substances are being taken in, it goes straight to the brain. brain. It acts on the brain stem and okay. other parts like cerebrum and cerebellum on the brain. Mm -hmm. So this actually make you feel, because you know the brain is actually the central nervous system. Yeah, Whatever yeah. comes from the brain affects the other parts yeah, of the body. body. So it, it, it creates that feeling, that avenue for you to think. But whereas you're actually damaging, damaging, you're damaging the brain gradually, they have, they, we found people who would tell you, I can't stop this, I can't mm -hmm. stop. It's because of the brain. No matter how hard you try, you can't stop by yourself. You need to get help. You need to get help to oh. get, so that is oh, just it. Like, uh, I'm, uh, I'm short of words. Yes. You know, knowing that 
it's it's baffling knowing that uh, people know that these things are dangerous to the health and they still continue. Still. Yes, but we need to know now what we are supposed to do, or when if one is addicted. But that will be after the break. Walking into comfort in a safe environment is every family's dream. At High Impact Planet Resort, our fully furnished service apartment is a home away from home. Amazing views right in your luxurious world. Work out to keep fit for an amazing buddy at the gym. Get affordable groceries and personal care items at the supermarket. Feel relaxed and beautify yourself at the fully equipped spa. High Impact Planet. Fun just got real. <laughs> yes, welcome back. This is still tea or coffee, and we've been talking about effects of drug abuse. In the studio, we have um, Casey Okudele, who we've been talking about. He is an occupational therapist and uh, you know he works in a rehabilitation center is working in medical uh, concept medical center which is a rehabilitation center also for bipolar and all that and drug abuse okay we're saying that what are the things that you know how do we curb this menace like when somebody knows that okay he's been doing this and he wants to stop what are the steps all right. What should take? Um, the first step is very, very simple. The first step is don't start. Yes. <laughs> That's the first step. Don't start. Because if you start, you know, the journey might be short, but for you to get back, it might take a long journey for you to actually be back. So the first uh, way to actually cope this, you know, social monster is actually... So no not to start at all. Don't mm -hmm. start at all. Because temptations of it will definitely come. You will see this around. You see this yes. in your gatherings. You see this. I mean, f every corner you walk around, you see the sales yes, of cannabis it. and all. Mm -hmm. The so thing is, do you see people, but even the look, the, the way they act, you know that this person definitely is high on <laughs> one <something>. cheap. <laughs> oh, yeah, it's actually very cheap. Or, yeah, 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 yeah. You actually know. So now that they're in there, maybe they didn't know how dangerous it would. You know, some people, they just say, oh, I will stop whenever I want to stop. And mm -hmm. they realize they're hooked. So what are the things that they can do now? Is there a way out? Yeah, they, there's always a way out. But like I said, at first is don't start. Mm -hmm. Now, the second mm -hmm. aspect of... Um, um, Treat, uh, prevention is actually uh, 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 treatment, uh, as the case may be, is get help. You need to get help. So you can't do it alone. But, 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 but most times, when you find people who smoke and drink and all that stuff, mm -hmm. when you tell them they need help, they feel, no, they are normal, they are okay. Yes. yes. A lot of people say, I can stop mm -hmm. when I, I will the, stop when I want to stop. <laughs> There's a questionnaire for, you know, for you know, people who are addicted to alcohol. They call it the cage questionnaire. That questionnaire actually contains some questions in which you ask people who are actually into it. Now, CAGE is like, is an acronym. Okay. okay. CAGE, C, actually stands for cut down. Now, uh, have you ever had a point in time in which you've had that opportunity to cut down your alcohol usage? Now, if you ask, let's say, anybody who's on alcohol, that question, I might say, okay, I started with a bottle, mm -hmm. from a bottle, or probably I started with... A cup, from a cup to a bottle, from a bottle to two bottles to three bottles. Mm -hmm. That's, that's, that's the cattle. progression. Yes. <laughs> you know, you know. Some people even brag. Uh -huh. I can take a cut Yeah, I can take a cut yeah. uh -huh. And then so, you're yeah. trying to prove a point, and you know, then you just you're hooked. You know, A is a, a aggression. You know, have you have, has, has anybody actually told you that you get more angry easily? You know, you find them very aggressive, like I said earlier, yes. or because of little thing, mm -hmm. somebody yeah. just flares up, yeah. start throwing things around, <laughs> you know. And uh, G actually is, have you ever feel, felt guilty? After doing something? Guilty, like, okay, after drinking, like, ah, 
like, am I supposed to have drunk so much bottles Thousands. like this? Am I yeah, supposed yeah. to have done this to this person? Am I supposed to have hit this person so hard because of, you know, mm -hmm. then he is high opener. This is very, 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 very obvious around. You see this virtually every day. Anywhere you stay in Nigeria, mm -hmm. you find bike men. First thing in the morning is they buy this sachet mm -hmm. thing, they drink. Mm -hmm. They say they are using it to open their to open eyes. eyes. <laughs> now when you tell them they actually have an alcohol problem, they will tell you no, they don't have. Mm -hmm. Now that's the problem. Do you get that is actually a big problem. So if you tell these people that they need to get help, they will tell you no. no. It is money I'm looking for. Mm -hmm. I need to find money and all that. So uh, it is actually uh, uh, a cumbersome aspect of uh, the, the treatment. When you find people who are into these things, you tell them they, they need to get help, they need to visit the rehab home, they need to okay. see a therapist and all that. I need to know one thing before okay. you continue. Okay. Is it very expensive to uh, get well, the help? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, economically speaking... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> economically speaking, uh, on, on a public aspect, it is relatively Unhurried. not expensive, but on a private aspect, it is quite expensive, hmm. honestly speaking. That is just it. Oh. Truth be told. And there's no other way than to get help. It's not something that you do in your house. Maybe you say, yeah. okay, to take, take one cassava flakes in the morning, <laughs> drink the water, <laughs> use it to wash your face. Okay, what, what you can do... reduce the urge. Mm -hmm. what, what you can do in your house, in mm -hmm. your homes is, don't start. Oh, my. Mm. <laughs> Another thing you can do is... Too late. Actually get to know yourself, one. Actually okay. get to know your friends, get to know your kids, your children, get yeah. close to them. Some have academic challenges. They won't tell you. Okay. Some keep it to themselves. Okay. And they tell friends and friends introduce them as and a result right of their, you know, depressed state. They introduce them. Uh -huh. <laughs> so just take it. Get to know yourself, get to know your kids, you get to know, know your okay. <laughs> get to know your family members, get to know your kids, get to know your nieces, your cousins, get to know everybody around you, get to know your neighbor. You know. When you, when you get to know your neighbor, you never can tell. Your neighbor might be a therapist, it might be a psychologist, it might be a, it might be a consultant psychiatrist. That was so you never can tell. Thing. So you might get help that cheap, okay, very close so to your Okay, so where do you house. stay? <laughs> <laughs> Which area? <laughs> <laughs> Where you? <laughs> because so that I would direct any, especially the bike driver, <laughs> anyone that, you know, tries to maneuver okay. while I'm driving, I'll just come. <laughs> Let me give you a <laughs> so you can see. I have someone you can see. Uh, well, no problem, mm -hmm. as long as it's from you. All right. Oh, because I know yes. that you definitely Thank foot you. your bill, so huh? it's, it's, it's not a big deal. Oh, I was saying. <laughs> so, is there any sensitization that the government or public uh, companies well, are doing? There are sensitization was going on, but it's actually on the low. It, it's not as popular as any festival or concert going around. Mm -hmm. So the government needs to actually improve on that. Mm -hmm. Then the agencies, they, they, they can't do it all. We have so much responsibility on ourselves to do much more because you don't expect a, uh, an official to just walk into your house and just be checking you all around. You, you, you need to actually find out time to, to get to know the people you're staying with, your children and all. Ask them questions. Let them be aware. Show them things. Let them be aware first because charity begins at home. Yes. Let them know these things. Let them know that this is the effect of these things. Show them clips. Take them around. Mm -hmm. You can visit rehab homes. Show them, you know, you know what you know, drugs are, has actually done to some people. Mm -hmm. See how lives have been lost, home shattered because of these things. See how, you know, the unemployment you know rate has increased. See how you know, you know bad tempered people have become. Some people, in spite of the economy, some people are just angry. Yeah, they they, they say they say Nigerians are they yeah, are potential angry people. You know, mm -hmm. any small thing. That's the reason why people say but sorry, the sorry, people. sorry. Before okay, before, before, before sorry, they ask questions, before they buy things, they <laughs> sorry, say sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> so it's because you don't know the... Sorry, how much <laughs> you know, You don't know the current, you know, state of the person you are about to approach or something. So 
uh, we, we all need to actually look out for ourselves, look out for our friends, look out for our neighbors. We, we have so much to do about that, uh, on that. Sorry, can I drink uh, this? Sure, you can, you can. <laughs> so we have so much to do, so much responsibility to do. Our children, they need to be aware because uh, we have a whole lot of kids that have, that have gone too far on drugs. Yes. yes. Too far. And it's not written on their faces. So we have so much to do. Parents, teachers, friends, neighbors. It's hard to break yeah, it. I was actually going to say that, you know, when uh, I wanted to chip that in also, when you were okay. saying, the first thing is that they shouldn't even go into it. And, like, obviously, some people are already in, in it, it, so they just need help. Far. And family, friends are the closest yes. that can help out, you know, yes. in and helping the, them yeah. solve the problem. And one problem. thing about the part, this part of the world is everything is deliverance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. And so, it's, nothing is. It's, it's, I don't know. Everything is deliverance. The next well. day, and somebody is addicted. They say, oh, yeah, I'm talking to my pastor or to my imam. Mm -hmm. And, and some parents actually push, you know, they actually push their children further. Because when the child now says, okay, so some children actually come out to say, okay, I think I have a problem. Okay. And then parents are like, uh, you just have to, you probably don't even have time. Or they don't even know. They pray over it fast, like you said. Pray over it fast. And then the child now then maybe probably goes to school and then meets a friend that says, don't worry, it's not prayer. Just continue to make you feel better or, you know, some sort of advice that even worsens the case. So I feel parents, friends actually have a long way to go in helping those that are actually addicted. Do you, do you know there are actually some parents who actually indulge in this and their children actually look up to them oh, and they right. also, also do all this stuff. So... We have, we have a, have a volatile home. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, culturally speaking, you know, we have tribes in which, you know, Sapele water, Uguguru is actually their <laughs> default drink. You know, All right. A whole lot of stuff going around. So much awareness needs to be pushed out there pushed out. In, in which, you know, you walk any mile or you walk any kilometer, you see this awareness, you know, you take a trek, you see this awareness, yeah. you know, something is telling you about mm -hmm. drug and uh, drug abuse and all that, so that y y you have that back of your mind that, okay, if you go this way, this is where you will eventually meet yourself. So we need more push out there on social media. And then, on, you know, a lot of times you don't even get to know the rehabilitation center. Yes. Like I have a friend that said that he realized that he was drinking too much and he went to see the doctor, I was surprised. I said, you went to see the doctor? He said, yes, there are doctors for that. I said, really? Yes. I didn't know. <laughs> so he talked about it, that he went to see the doctor, and right now he's a, um, an occasional drinker that before. He every was, time. Every day. If he does, so that he had to like sit, talk with himself, and went for um, to see the doctor. But the thing is, you don't, a lot of times, people don't even know where to go to, to start mm -hmm. with. That's true, though. They don't know where to go to. They don't know what is happening, you know. Uh, they all, we only know of doctor headache for headache. <laughs> and, you know, yes. Pregnancy yeah. and all yeah, that. You're so. very right. Now, the thing is, um, rehabilitation centers are not so much in Nigeria. Okay. But besides, you know, you even visiting a rehab center or hospital, the stigma attached to it okay. is very, very, very grounded, mm -hmm. culturally speaking. Yeah. You know, you find, hardly can you tell somebody you want to go into rehab or to yeah. see a doctor, like, ah, we really lay you, this, exactly. this is mad. Ah, the family, that uh -huh, is it. In their it's family. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So Manage. there's this social stigma attached to it yeah. in which people find it very, very hard to actually go see a psychiatrist, mm -hmm. uh, a therapist, mm -hmm. uh, a psychologist for the issues that they have because they feel what will people say so first you need to actually get that stigma off, off. then your eyes will open mm -hmm. we have some rehab homes online we have the popular yaba the psychiatric hospital yaba mm -hmm. the popular yaba left hand. Mm -hmm. you know but yeah that's what are, people use you know, you do something, they say, ah, you belong to Yaba. Uh -huh. right? you know? uh -huh. So even for people yeah. who are coming out of Yaba and going in, they have a stigma already because yes. be people, people are going to be wondering mm -hmm. who are these people. And, <laughs> you know, so... And mental this, health it, is very important. It's, it's very important to the because it's, it's non-communicable. It's, yeah. not, it's not kata. 
it's that you see. That, mm -hmm. that <laughs> somebody sneezing, somebody like, just stay. It's very calm and it's very depressed. You mm -hmm. actually feel that person is actually that that's his normal state. Quite very quiet. Very quiet. She's mm. a very quiet mm. girl. Yeah, she might be quiet, but as well depressed. Now, can we also say that um, some of the effects of the an effect of drug abuse is depression? Yes. It's one, it's yeah. one of it. And it, it actually is actually one of uh, the effects that makes people go into it more. more. Because they have Want nobody to, to talk to. Yeah. Yeah. People feel uh, she's just quiet. People just neglect them because of you know their state. And they eventually result into using drugs in which you might never find that until it is too, too late. late. But talking about neglect, how do you bring out somebody that is quiet and doesn't want to talk how do you bring them out of that um, state engagement one okay you engage them like you have been engaging me since morning <laughs> <laughs> or you, you're ready to talk <laughs> some are just not ready to yeah. talk so just not ready. Yeah, withdrawn. so yeah some are not ready to talk mm -hmm. but for as long as there's a bond Okay, let's take for example like a child to a mother there's a bond mm -hmm. you definitely know how to bring such person out by engagement, yeah, definitely. Friends, peers, the same way they introduce you to drugs, the same way you can engage somebody who is actually quiet or right. probably depressed, bring such person out to talk. Some might just want privacy, like they don't want people around them, just one-on-one -on -one discussion. Mm -hmm. Give them such avenue, talk. Don't shout. Some just want it on the low. Don't shout, just talk to them as subtle as you can. Give them listening ears. Mm -hmm. okay. A whole lot of quiet people have so much to say, but most times they don't get listening ears. Yes. Do you get? Everybody can be brought out. We are social beings. Mm -hmm. Everybody can be brought out, no matter how quiet you are. All you right. Get? Okay. Um, imagine somebody comes for rehabilitation. Right. How long does it take for the person to be perfectly okay? No. Oh. That is, that is actually a, a question being determined. By the person? By, uh, no, not the person. One, by the condition first. All right. Then secondly, by the psychiatrist. All that right. Is, okay. The person actually determines how long the stay of that person is going to be. And some might not even stay. Might just be occasional visit. Okay. No, but some, on a worst case scenario, you have to just admit them. Okay. So, so like, how long? Let's say, some, um, if you have to put it in. Some can take months. Months, like a month? Two um, months? Three months? Three months, six months, some more. Some more than a year. Some more than a year? A year. Yeah. Wow. For it to get out of this system. The system. Uh, well, not particularly. Okay. Because, of course, after a while, those uh, harmful substances would have been, you know, gotten rid of from the system. But okay. After that, there's an arm of rehabilitation, what they call occupational rehabilitation. Do you get somebody who, who, who and that's where you come in. Yeah, you know, somebody <laughs> who who, are, who has you know gone through a whole lot of stuff, depression, drug, and all that. After. You get rid of all these substances. That person needs to be useful to society because okay. if such a person is not, there's every possibility that person goes back to, you know, those substances. So that is where we have, uh, occupational therapy comes into play, and uh, we ensure that such a person goes back, fully rehabilitated and useful to society. Okay. Wow. Is there a way? Um is there a point that when they bring a patient, you know that, oh, this is a no-no, it's done? Well, we don't give up on people. <laughs> you don't give up on people. But, yeah, no okay. matter how terrible the case is. No may matter be. how terrible, but it, there's is, always a way. is there a way that somebody must have gotten far? Because I hear of a situation where some people say just once and the person, mm -hmm. you well, know. We have, we have, we have, became we've had um, terrible mentally and violent sick. cases in which Patients like that have to be restricted, but mm -hmm. there is never a worst case scenario. Do you get? So they can anybody can. There will can always get. be help. There will always be help, no matter how far you've gone. Okay. Mm -hmm. You can always take your steps back. 
All right. And the that person will be a whole person or will be managed friend. throughout the person, their the life. The person will be managed right. as perfect and as responsible as a person can. Mm. Do you get? Rehabilitation is quite cumbersome and very burdensome, but there's, there, there has been lots of results in it and it's it, it worth it. So can it take up to millions of Naira? <laughs> I just want to know. So to tell people that yes. but what's the essence of buying something of worth 200 Naira and then you spend so much to get it out of the system? Does it take... Is it few thousands or millions? Well, you know, if... <laughs> Economically speaking, yes. <laughs> um, don't meander. Uh, straight. <laughs> I, I I can't say for sure. Mm -hmm. mm, I can't Just, say for sure, but you know, sometimes it depends on the longevity of you know the stay of that person. I don't know. Sometimes. Sometimes. What happens? You you pay, you spend, but up to I, millions. But I can't say specifically that you spend up to millions. But I know you will spend, but I know you will pay. Ah. Hmm. Maybe that's why some people don't bother getting for help because uh, yes, of the cost. People consider that also. And, um, wow. But it's better now uh, than later. Yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's better now. now. Better you get help now than later. Okay, so what's your advice? I know you've been saying don't try. <laughs> don't try. <laughs> because that's the first thing I will say. <laughs> uh, so now they are listening. So what's your advice um, for the people out there, the people that are um, already into it and those contemplating? Mm -hmm. um, They're trying to decide if to start uh, or not. Uh, okay, first of all, I would say don't start. <laughs> uh, obviously. Please, just don't start. Just Wait, don't. have you ever tried it? No. Okay. No. Please, just don't start. Okay. That is the first thing you should always have at the back of your mind because you definitely see these things around. It, it, it's as common as the pure water you see on the street. Hmm. So just don't start. That's the first thing I would say to my people, okay. to the people listening. and Don't start. Then another thing I would say is get help. That's, that's another thing. You need to get help. If you have started already, you need to get help. Then another thing is we need sensitization. You, we, 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 we need, you know, we all have a lot of responsibility on us to actually check on our friends, our neighbors. I think I've said this earlier. Mm -hmm. we, we, we all need to get to know, you know, what they do. We need to get to know why such, uh, so, uh, why somebody is quiet. Sometimes call your friends, check out on them, mm -hmm. you know, love your neighbor, you know, get to know your family, talk to them, and all that. And uh, another thing is, we can make ripple, uh, we can make baby steps to cause ripple effect. Now this is how it starts. Okay, the bike man you take in the morning, you tell him, okay, if you do this, this, this is what you will do to you in the long term. Don't do this. Okay, before you know it, when you tell that bike man and see reasons with you, he will tell another bike another man. Person. Before you know it, on your line, that information would have gotten to at mm -hmm. least like 75% of the people. And mm -hmm. before you know it, they'll be putting a check to that. The bus driver, the, 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 the down for you enter, the be out, just tell them, oh, this is what. Driver, what you are saying? <laughs> <laughs> what you are no, 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 there are some that will give you listening ears. There are conductors that will give you listening ears. I, I talk to some, okay. they will give you listening ears okay. as long as you have paid your money. All you right. know, they, they give you listening ears and you know, you talk to them, you know sensitize okay this is what you should do this is what you shouldn't do before you know it the awareness will be growing little by little because thank we can't leave everything to the government you. thank you so much yes, yes we've been talking yeah. with casey and um, he's been enlightening us on a lot of things about the effect of drug abuse. abuse you know with the but we can't just throw in the towel and believe that, okay, let's leave the youth. We need to think of positive ways to make their life better rather than just um, allowing the pressure and the stress of the country or the area to affect them. So that's it on Tea or Coffee today. Make sure you join us tomorrow, same time for another episode. Um, 
Ronke Ashiru. And I'm Modupe Jacobs. All right. We'll see Bye. you tomorrow. Bye.